my dear students, I am Praveen Bansal, teaching class 12th accounts, book 2, chapter number 6, cash flow statement and this is our first session for cash flow statement. Students, cash flow statement is prepared by companies and nowadays it is part of its financial statements as a sole proprietor prepares trading profit and loss account and balance sheet. Partnership firms maintain trading profit and loss account, PL appropriation and balance sheet. And now companies prepare income statement, balance sheet and cash flow position. Cash flow position is maintained by companies to know about inflows and outflows of cash during the year. Now you can see the definition on your screen. It is a statement that shows the flows that is inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalent during the period under report. For an example, if we are preparing financial statements for 2019-20, all kind of cash inflows and outflows would be dealt in cash flow statement. Why is it necessary to maintain cash flow statement? As we know, there are several users for financial statements. They want to know what is the cash position of the firm and this is what cash flow statement helps with. It helps the investor to know from where the funds are arranged and where the funds are exhausted. So to understand this thing in a better way, let's understand the components of cash flow statement. The first thing which is covered in cash flow statement is cash flow from operating activities, principal revenue producing activities of the enterprise. Principal revenue producing activities are dealt in operating activities. The way name is saying operating items which are of business operations, buying goods, selling goods, paying rent paying salary, receiving money by selling goods, etc, etc. These could be the operating things of a business. And frankly, these are the only things because of which most of the cash comes in and goes out. And that is what is dealt in operating activities. And other activities that are not students focus on this line that are not investing and financing. Investing and financing are the other two components of cash flow statement. Here you must focus a transaction which is not investing and financing. These terms would be dealt later. Just make one thing very sure, a transaction which is not falling in any other kind of activity is operating activity. If you cannot classify anything into investing and financing, that thing is operating activity. So let's take few examples for operating activities. Purchase of goods, selling goods, paying salaries, rent, receiving income, etc. These all could be the operating activities. But one thing clicks my mind that buying goods, selling goods, paying expenses, receiving incomes, these all things are already deducted and added while making profit and loss account. So why to do the same thing again? So my dear students, we would be starting with the balance of profit and loss because while calculating profit, we have already deducted all the expenses and added all the incomes. So just make one thing sure in your mind, whenever you are going to start operating activities, you are going to start it with the balance of profit and loss account because operating means operational things of business and profit and loss account 
deals with all these things only. Yes, there would be few adjustments we would be making to the balance of profit and loss account and we will deal with such stuff later. Now let us move to the second component of cash flow statement that is investing activity. What do you mean by investing activity? Students, we arrange fund from many sources. We arrange fund from share capital, from debentures, from bank, etc. But where all these funds are used? This money is used in acquiring fixed assets for business. And that is what investing activity is. Investing activity deals with buying and selling of non-current assets. Suppose a company have rupees 10 crore to start its business. Now the question is, why does the company need rupees 10 crore? Company need that 10 crore rupees to get a land, building, plant, machine. So that's why it needs money. The money arranged is an item of financing activity which you are going to learn next. But where this money is used, that is investing activity. For an example, if you bought building, it is investing in fixed asset. So it is an outflow of cash. But if you sold that building, it is inflow of cash. Buying and selling of non-current assets are items of investing activities. Now students ask me a question. Sir, where would buying and selling of current assets go? So the answer is, buying and selling of current asset is operating thing and that is covered under operating activities. So in nutshell, if I conclude all the incoming and outgoing of current and non-current assets, the conclusion is all current assets bought and sold are dealt in operating activities, all non-current assets bought and sold are covered in investing activities. Last component is financing activities. It deals with the capital structure of a company. Capital structure of a company means how much of share capital is there and how much of borrowed funds are there. If you arrange share capital, that means it is owner's fund. If you borrow money from the market, that is borrowed fund. So, this financing activity thing is covering the same. If you issue share capital, money flows in. And if we redeem share capital, money goes out. It is an outflow. Same treatment would be given to debentures. If we issue debentures, it is an inflow. If we redeem debentures, it is an outflow. If you raise bank loan, it is an inflow. If you pay back bank loan, it is an outflow. And all the rewards and charges, rewards means dividend to the shareholders and charge means interest to the debenture holders are also relating to capital thing. So interest paid would be deducted. Similarly, dividend paid would also be deducted. If I go back to my investing activity, I could have bought shares. I could have bought shares of some other company. So that is an investment. But if I issue shares, that is my financing activity. I repeat, if I buy shares of some other company, I am making investment. So buying shares is an investment. So that would be an item of investing activity. 
bought investment would make an outflow it would be deducted but if you sell such investment it would be added in the same way if you get some interest or dividend from these investments it's an inflow in your company any kind of interest or dividend received would be added in investing activities if i recall the balance sheet in my mind and look what is the content of asset side and what is the content of liability side i can easily identify which item will go under which head if i look at the asset side we have non current assets buying and selling of such non current assets would be an investing activity all the current assets would be an operating activity if i go to liability side all the current liabilities current means operating so buying and selling of current assets and current liabilities would be operating and shareholders fund plus long term borrowings these would be dealt in financing activities so this is how you can easily see how money is flowing in and out and all these inflows and outflows would be shown in cash flow statement let's understand how do we start with the operating activity as we have already discussed that operating activity means dealing with operational things of a business buying goods selling goods paying expenses receiving incomes and we have already learned that these all things are already done in profit and loss account or say income statement when it comes to company so when we will be starting with operating activity we would be starting with the difference between closing and opening balance of profit and loss account that means you would be provided with the profit of 2 years and the difference of that profit is the current profit so according to our discussion we would be starting with the profit only because buying selling of goods receiving of income paying of expenses are already done while making profit and loss account but there are few things we have done in profit and loss account are not attracting inflow or outflow of cash and there are certain things which are dealt in profit and loss account which were not of business operation i repeat while calculating your profit and loss you have covered many things which were not of operational nature of the business and there were few things which does not include inflow and outflow of cash so while making cash flow statement from operating activities and starting it from profit and loss account we have to adjust all those items for an example i am adding dividend paid students the figure appearing in the balance sheet of profit and loss means all kind of expenses are deducted dividend paid out of profit is deducted but we are calculating cash flow from operating activities and paying dividend is not the operating activity of business but we have already deducted that so what should we do with that dividend we must add it back clear now you must have transferred profit to the general reserve for retained earning most of the companies transfer a bit of profit to general reserve so that 
it can be used in the future. But students, do you know, we just make an entry in the books of account to transfer general reserve and it appears on the debit side of profit and loss account. We deduct profit because we have transferred a bit of profit to the general reserve, but it does not include any kind of cash outflow. So, we have to add it back again because we are calculating cash flow from operating activities, cash flow and deducting profit because of reserve does not make any outflow of cash. So, we have to add back that general reserve. Provision for tax made, any kind of provision treated as charge in profit and loss is not attracting any outflow of cash, it is just an anticipation. So, we have to add any kind of provision made. There are certain extraordinary items debited in profit and loss. For an example, voluntary retirement compensation paid to any employee or any claim paid, these are the extraordinary items. These are not our operational thing, we have to add them back because we are calculating cash flow from operating activities. Sometimes we company pay more tax to the tax authorities and we get a refund of tax from the authorities and we just credit it in our profit and loss, statement of profit and loss, but it is not an income from the operations of business and we are calculating cash flow from operating activities. Receiving refund of tax from the income tax department is not my operating activity, but it is added in PNL account. So, we have to deduct it by subtracting and adding all the discussed thing. What do we get? We get net profit before tax an extraordinary item. And one more thing, the way we added extraordinary items debited, we have to subtract extraordinary items credited. The way we paid certain compensations, it could be a case we have received certain claims and receiving claims is not my operating activity. So, that should also be deducted while calculating cash flow from operating activities. So, while calculating operating activities, the very first step is to calculate net profit before tax and extraordinary items. This is the first step you all must learn. You would have few questions in your textbook just to calculate net profit before tax and extraordinary item. So, the method to study this particular chapter is making 2-3 questions of just calculating net profit before tax and extraordinary items. Now, to calculate operating activities, the second step is to calculate operating profit before working capital changes and we would continue the same thing. As you will arrive on net profit before tax and extraordinary items, you have to make certain adjustments for non-cash and non-operating activities. If you remember, you always debited profit and loss account with an expense naming depreciation. Depreciation means loss in the value of fixed asset. But students, is there any outflow of cash because of the depreciation? It is a non-cash expense. So, if it is a non-cash expense, that means it is a charge on profit, but there is no outflow of cash because of that. So, if you find 
any such non cash expense in your PL or statement of PL, just add it back, right? And one more thing loss in the value of any intangible asset is known as amortization, like writing off goodwill, patents, trademarks, etc. So these two are our non cash expenses. Okay. And there is one more very common thing in our profit and loss account that is interest on borrowings. It is a charge, but it is not my operating thing. It is not my operating thing. So we have to add it back. The next item to be added is loss on sale of machine. Whenever we face a loss, because of sale of machine or any fixed asset, we debit that thing in profit and loss account. But this is not my operating kind of expense or say there is no as such cash flow because of that loss. So we have to add that. In the same way, we always credit our profit and loss account with a gain on sale of any fixed asset. But this is not our operating thing. So that should be deducted. Sometimes we see certain incomes in our profit and loss which are non operational receiving rent, receiving dividend, receiving interest. These all are non operating incomes of business, but credited to the profit and loss account. So we have to deduct them. Since we are calculating cash flow from operating activities. So by adding subtracting all these items, we will arrive on operating profit before working capital changes. After coming to know about net profit before working capital changes, we would give the final touch to this thing to arrive on the net figure to know about what is the exact inflow and outflow of cash from operating activities. As you can see, we have already arrived on operating profit before working capital changes. Operating profit means only operational things are covered. Before working capital means still current assets and current liabilities are to be treated. As we know, payment to creditors, buying of stock are not included in profit and loss. As we know, payment of liabilities and receipt of debtors are not included in profit and loss account. But paying money to liabilities, current liabilities and receiving money from current assets are operational things. So these are to be treated while calculating cash flow from operating activities. So we would be continuing this thing only in our next session till the time you all are advised to practice questions of net profit before tax and extraordinary items and operating profit before working capital changes. Thank you.